Now that watchOS 9 is finally officially released, we're gonna go ahead and test it out across a bunch of different app watches. Now, watchOS 9, in case you weren't aware, supports the Series 4 and newer Apple Watch, and that's what we have right here. Unfortunately, this is a time when the discontinuation of the Series 3 hasn't no longer supported for watchOS 9, but we're gonna go ahead and test out the supported devices and see what change, what innovations made it to each and one of them, and such. So let's go ahead and get started. So a new feature for the Series 7 that it received in watchOS 7 was the compass backtrack ability. So if we grab a Series 7 and by holding down the power button, we have the new compass backtrack. Now it supports the Series 7. Unfortunately, if we pick up the SE, I notice it doesn't work. So it doesn't have the compass ability. But the Series 5, same outcome, does not support it. However, the Series 6, if you hold it, it supports it. So the Series 6 is probably one of the best value Apple Watches now because it actually holds some of the new Series 7 and the Apple Watch 8, or well, Series 8, and the Apple Watch Ultra ability. So if we go back and pick up the Series 7, so this is the Compass app. It's totally redesigned. It shares the same features that we've seen when Apple previewed it on the Apple Watch Ultra, so it has the backtrack capability. And from our previous test, it only supports the Series 6, 7, 8, and Ultra. I'm not sure about the SE2. I have to wait until I get my hands on it, which is this Friday, so make sure you are subscribed. But onwards to the video. Here's the Compass app. UI is totally redesigned. You have the capability to zoom all the way out. So as you're tracking your backtracks, log, you can actually see like a little mini map you could follow in case you want to head back. Now, in order for it to actually track, you have to make sure you, you do hit start and it will actually give you the capability to pause it right here. You're able to retract your steps whenever you head back or you decide to, you can delete it if you're okay, you don't want to. And then over on this side, this icon over here allows you to actually create different markers. So it will actually pin drop a marker. You could change the icon, the color of it right here. So if you find an outhouse, you could select the toilet, the pooper, the great white one. And of course for privacy issues, I'm gonna blur this because it just literally shows me a map where I live and uh, yeah, uh, privacy concerns, I'm not doing that. But just take my word for it, it shows like a little mini map and to the most part, it's really accurate. And then over here, if you want the other information about your compass, like your incline, elevation, and latitude, this is how it looks like. And you have a little moving arrow right here and that also indicates north. So the compass app, that's basically how it looks like now. And the complication also has been revamped for the Series 6 and newer Apple Watch. Now, low power mode, the brand new and improved low power mode can be found in the control center. Just tap the battery life percentage, hit low power mode, and it'll give you a brief summary of what it does. So it will disable your always on display. It will turn off some heart rate sensors and stuff, accelerometer sensors, and your notifications will also be slightly delayed. But with this mode enabled, it's said to be able to allow the Apple Watch to last up to 30 hours under a single charge. And yeah, when you look at the brief description, it does turn off a lot of things. Now to turn on, you simply just hit turn on, or you could select turn on for how many days you like. So three days is the max. And the supported devices for this, as soon as we enable it, just go ahead and turn it on. And then the Percentage is yellow and you have this little yellow halo on top and then the notification section will also show a little halo, yellow halo as well Letting us know that low power mode is indeed enabled now for the series 4 You it is supported on the series 4 Same options and such for the days the Apple watch s5 also supports it Just unfortunately the Apple watch se does not you just have the regular reserve power mode. The Series 6 supports it. So all the other Apple Watches support this except for the Apple Watch SE. But in this low power mode, if you have nightstand mode enabled and you dock your device, it is now a yellow animation. And the little lightning bolt right here, if you tap on it, it gives us a new display. And now, Let's just go back and reverse and turn off low power mode. Let's just repeat, repeat the same process we did. So control center, battery life percentage, and disable it like so. 
And then also the turn off uh, screen is also different now too. So to turn off your app watch, you tap the little top corner right here. And here's where you'll locate the power off slider. Now this Series 7 happens to be the Nike Plus Edition Apple Watch or the Nike Edition I should say. And what was exclusive was these Nike watch faces. That no longer is the case because now it's available on non Nike Edition Apple Watches. So if you actually go to your library right here, you'll be able to find your Nike watch faces you have to select from. And if you actually add it to your device, that Nike logo is a shortcut to the Nike Club Run app. So if you use that app a lot with these watch faces, that little icon frees up a complication. So you're afraid to use the other coronal complications depending on the watch face you select. And just tap on the Nike logo, it will quickly launch that app. Like for instance, this Series 6 is not a Nike edition and yet I have the Nike watch face right here. And yeah, tap the Nike logo and it will quickly launch the Nike Run app. Now as for watch faces, this is the first time in a while that both different size watch faces watches got an update. So we're using a small Apple Watch and the large 45 millimeter Apple Watch and both of them received the same update. So Astronomy got a new revamp in design as it shows the cloud patterns as well as the pinpoint location where you are located globally. Then we have Lunar which allows you to select from the Chinese calendar, Hebrew or Islamic calendar. Here's how that looks like. It's pretty luxurious looking, I gotta admit. Then the next one is Metropolitan, which basically allows you to have four complications on the corner. And if you rotate the digital crown, you can actually change the design on demand without having to go into the edit. So you can like stretch out the numbers as you're witnessing right now. Then Modular now supports additional colors for the wallpaper for the background, which doesn't look too shabby at all. And then there is playtime, which is more for like kids focus, I believe it feels like because you have these interactive characters, but no complications or anything like that in the background. And then the portrait wallpaper now supports pets and new enhancements with the time clock overlay. And then if you use the sleep tracking capability, we also seen additional improvements on here as not only if sleep tracking will track more additional data than ever before, but if you actually go onto your iPhone app, and go on to the Apple Watch and go into sleep, you can now enable charging reminders. So the Apple Watch will actually notify you before you go to bed, depending on the schedule you selected, to charge your watch ahead of time so it has enough battery to actually make it throughout the entire night and track your sleeping. And to get out of sleep tracking mode, you no longer rotate the digital crown, you actually press and hold until the animation just opens up like so. This also applies to wire lock mode and focus modes. Now in terms of new apps, there's now this new medication application that will basically allow you to have receive notifications and mark everything as you're taking your vitamins or medication throughout the entire day. In, or, in other words, it's a reminder to uh, take your meds or vitamins. In addition to that, if you actually launch the calendar app, it also has some new integrations as well as now you can actually backtrack the whole calendar then previously you were just stuck with like two or three months of a calendar and then a couple of weeks now you actually have more visibility of some previous or future times to schedule stuff with just viewing your wrist without having to take out your phone the podcast app also received new updates now you're actually able to search but in addition to that you could follow or unfollow shows on the podcast app from your apple watch now and then if you wish to increase the text size on demand, if you launch Control Center, tap Edit, there's now this new shortcut available right here for text size. And Apple not only gave us this ability, but now the text size can go up to nine times. So they gave us more sliders to choose from and select. And if whatever said reason you have no access to your display, display is not responding, or you're just having a hard time viewing the display on your Apple Watch, if you go in your settings and go into accessibility on your iPhone, you can select Apple Watch mirroring right here. A little window will pop up and this will give you full access to your Apple Watch, including the digital crown and such. Now it can be laggy at times, but it actually does work pretty well for the most part. And yes, you do have access to once more the digital crown and the power button right here on the side. And then an interesting feature that Apple integrated if you need additional control you can actually pair a Bluetooth wireless keyboard to the Apple Watch now. I'll test that more in detail in a future video. Another update, AFib is now supported with Apple Watches that support ECG. 
So you can actually track your AFib now if you have a history of that. And if you're using cellular connection, if you have a cellular Apple Watch, international roaming is supported now for the cellular version Apple Watches on WatchOS 9. And then as for the workout app, a lot of these workouts receive additional information that they now can display. For instance, the most popular one is the heart rate zone. So if you're running outdoors or something like that, or you scroll down, but just scroll down, this is where you'll find additional information for other things. But here you can actually track the zone that your heart rate's at for the maximize cardio or fat burning zone you you want to be in if you're working out you can see this information right here on your wrist so other than the apple watch se not receiving the new low power ability it's not bad this upgrade isn't bad at all this firmware update had some additional surprises and stuff that apple didn't really cover them during their keynote but i'm glad i'm able to confirm what's supported and what's not and i'm also really satisfied that the those new watch faces are also available even on the smaller screen version Apple Watches. So I'm glad everybody got those new additions. Aside from that, make sure you are subscribed because I plan on checking out the Apple Watch SE2 to see if this new model, I'm really curious, has the compa capability as well as like tr backtrack as well as the low power mode. I'm gonna go ahead and test that out as well as make like a comparison video against every single Apple Watch, including the Ultra. So make sure you are subscribed for that. Other than that, if you got some good useful information out of this video, you know what to do. Greatly appreciate it if you can actually leave this video a like, as it does help me out a lot, and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. If you'd like to watch more, maybe my recent video, go ahead and check it out right over there as I cover everything new, all the cool hidden features and tips and tricks available for iOS 16 for your iPhone. And then that video over there, that is the video YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. See ya.